Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. And this is Real True Street Crime. And I just wanted to come in and kick in and answer a few questions for my audience today. One of the questions was, Wanda Holloway, Chucky Holloway was Demetrius and Chucky Holloway brothers. Not in the beginning, my brother. Demetrius and Chucky Holloway was not brothers. Demetrius wound up marrying Chucky Holloway's sister, which was Wanda Holloway. So Demetrius Holloway and Chucky Holloway were not brothers. They became family members later on because Demetrius married Chucky Holloway's sister. And I want to say this to all of y'all, and it's just the way it was. I saw Demetrius with more women than anything. I saw Demetrius with an appetite of women more than anything. Understand this. Demetrius Holloway, every time I saw him, he had a different woman with him. And I want you to know this. He did not marry Wanda Holloway until six months before he got killed. So Demetrius was a single bachelor most of his life. Six months before he got killed, that is when he married Wanda Holloway. Six months before he got killed is when he married her. But before then, he had an appetite of nothing but women. Understand that all he had was women. Every time I seen Demetrius, he had another woman with him. And I do mean he had another woman with him. When I went down to the trolley plaza, he had another woman with him. Everywhere I went, Demetrius had women with him. So I need you to notice when I'm talking the story, it's a story that I know he wanted to be told. Just like my father. He told me, Eddie, I got pictures in Ebony. I got a story that should be told. Demetrius Holloway, all these, these niggas didn't do all this over the top shit and you think they wanted to die and never be known? Don't believe that. Don't ever believe that because they told me different than that. And this I know. Demetrius wanted to be remembered. Who don't want to be remembered? Whether good or bad, everybody wants to be remembered. So please don't forget that at any point in any time in your lifetime, the things you do regardless to who you wind up marrying, and they might be salty that you got killed. Why are you telling stories about my husband? Sister, that was my life too. You wasn't there for none of the shit we did. It's my story and his story. You was nowhere around. You was nowhere around, and if we be goddamn honest about it, all the rest of these bitches was sucking dick and fucking trying to get that man. Probably like you were. Everybody was after that man. He was the hottest motherfucking item in Detroit. Don't you see his one of his ex-women went to the feds on him because he married Wanda? Do y'all really realize that? Because he married Wanda. That was part of the reason that bitch was at him like 40 going off with the feds. She was determined to get him. Understand that. She said, if I can't have him, can't no bitch have him. And that's how bitches felt about him. Bitches was in love with that little light-skinned, pretty boy, freckle-faced brother. Understand that. So when I tell stories, they my stories. I live them. It's like saying, you can never be sued for telling the truth, ever. As long as you're telling the truth, you can't be sued. And that's a fact. Look it up. So when I tell these stories, I live them. Just because he was a part of them and he got killed. Don't say I can't tell these stories. Or I don't have a right to tell these stories. Because it was my life just as well as his. And then to top this shit off. Where was all you motherfuckers talking shit when that man was robbing trains? Where was all you motherfuckers talking shit when his mom need $20,000 to get some inventory for her clothing story? I ain't seen none of you motherfuckers Johnny on the spot giving up $20,000 out your pocket to help his goddamn mama. But everybody got some shit to say now. Oh, why he talking about Demetrius so much? Goddamn, would you be talking about a train robber? I don't think so. So I understand part of the goddamn story is us. How did he get plugged? How did he become this notorious 
narcotics dealer after being a goddamn train robber. Tell me how does he become a multi-millionaire selling multi-keys a well? Tell me how he became that. Because if he wasn't in a penitentiary with him, you ain't going to know. If you didn't know Eddie Jackson, you ain't going to know. If you didn't know Richard Wakefield, you ain't going to know. And the appetite of women I saw that man with, as I said before, every time I seen that brother, he had a different bitch with him. And that ain't no motherfucking joke. And all them bitches was fine. Let me add that to the point, too. Every time I saw that man, he had a different bitch with him, and all of them was fine. Know that. So I ain't trying to hurt nobody's feeling. I'm just telling the story for what it really is. Just because he married Wanda don't mean his life story shouldn't be told. Understand that just because I married Kenyatta don't mean I don't want my life story to be told. Just because Eddie Jackson married Octavina Jackson don't mean that he don't want his life story told. Whether Octavina Jackson wanted told, whether Wanda wanted told, whether Kenyatta wanted told. It's our life that we lived. Understand that. And they was a part of it. Wanda got six months of that brother before he got killed. And prior to that, even if she was around, she was one of the few. So know that, because I was around watching the shit go down. I was around watching it go down. So now I ain't supposed to tell the story. Oh, Eddie, you can't talk about Demetrius because he got killed. I was right there with him. Half the shit we did, you don't even know about. And let me say that again. Half the shit... Me and brother Demetrius Holloway did. I'm sure his wife don't know about it because he couldn't tell her. What nigga gonna go out and kill a nigga and come back and tell his wife? And then his wife might decide one day, because you fucking all these bitches being a playboy, she might want to turn you in. What man would take such a chance? No man. And a real one? Never. That man did so much, his wife will never know about it. I didn't did so much. My wife will never know about it. My father has done so fucking much, my mother will never know about it. Whether she like it or not, it's his story and he wanted it to be told. Understand that, and I say that to all of you. It's their story and they want it to be told. Now, because you don't want them to be memorized. You only been around for goddamn six months. You married that man for six months. Now, you want to call a shot. Don't nobody remember Demetrius Holloway. Y'all forget every story y'all knew about him. But when you die, I guarantee you want a nigga to remember you. Oh, remember me. Tell the people how I was. I want to be remembered. Now, nah, you don't want that man to be remembered. And I think that's awful goddamn selfish and jealous, especially when I know you was only there like that the last six months. See, this is what I know about the story. He married Wanda Holloway six months before he got killed. And him and Chucky Holloway was of no relative, no relations until after Demetrius Holloway married Wanda Holloway. And Chucky had been long since dead. So I had to come back and answer these questions for y'all. So y'all know I know what I'm talking about. Understand that. Wanda Holloway was Chucky Holloway's sister, and Demetrius Holloway married Chucky Holloway's sister. And that's the true facts of the story. And I have to say this. I have true sympathy. I didn't see my Uncle Lodge OD on shit, and I have to tell you that. That ain't nothing pleasant to tell y'all. My Uncle Lodge OD'd on cocaine. It's not pleasant. All the stories ain't going to be pleasant, but they true. So when I tell you certain things about Demetrius having all these bitches and all that, and he didn't marry Wanda until six months before he got killed, had faked his death, and when he came back into the city airport with Wanda is when they arrested him. So I need y'all to notice that the story has to be told and that man wanted his story to be told. Understand that. So who don't like it? I was a part of it, and it was my life. And can't nobody in this world tell me I cannot tell my life story just because Demetrius Holloway was a part of it, a wonderful part of it, one of the best parts of it. Now, you're going to tell me I can't tell how good that man was to me, how much I really loved that man. Now, I can't tell you that 
because somebody else don't want you to hear that. Oh, don't talk about my husband. Baby, we had him long before you did and we made him. Understand, would you have wanted him if he wasn't Demetrius Holloway, the notorious narcotics dealer who could buy you anything that you wanted and y'all go all over the world spending money? Would you have wanted him if he was a train robber? That's a question I often wonder with all these women. All these dope dealers you take, if they had been working nine to fives, would you have wanted them? Would you have had the same feelings for you? Would you have loved him? Because a lot of times we don't think so. We think if we wasn't that, we'd have never had a chance with you. My father used to always say that about, Eddie, baby, half the bitches I fucked, if I wasn't the big man, them bitches would have never gave me no pussy. None of them. But I got it because I was the big man. Understand that. So know that. And everybody's story got to be told, whether good or bad. If you don't want your story to be told and you want to live this earth all the years you lived, and don't nobody remember shit about you. You dying, the motherfuckers just forget about you. If that's what you want, all right, that's what you should have. But that's not what Demetrius Holloway wanted. That's not what Eddie Jackson wanted. And that's not what Eddie Jackson Jr. wants. So I came out here on the beach just to sit down and catch some air because it's hot than a motherfucker down here. And I need y'all to know that it's hot than a motherfucker down here understand that so i had to come out and get some air this morning all you who might be player haters don't want to look at the video because it's on the beach don't look at it turn it off we on the beach enjoying life waking up this morning hot then a motherfucker came out to catch a beautiful sunrise down here in the hot fort lottie dotty where we is in the motherfucking heat dome baby so you better come out to the beach in the morning and catch you a little air baby Cause it's hot than a motherfucker. All over this motherfucker. Restaurants can't get no business cause it's too hot. People don't want to come out till the sun go down. Remind me of how it was in El Paso, Texas. The summer of 1988. 1988. Hot than a motherfucker. It was a drought, wouldn't rain. Everything was catching on fire. And I was on my way to Mexico to see my man understand I was on my way to Mexico looking for that plug trying to get plug me and my uncle William understand that Dave Goff has sent me down there to get a sample of that killer ass dog food because I had to know was it real I didn't gave this nigga all this money to fix up an airplane to fly down to Mexico. Now, I got to go down to Mexico and see, before I put any more money in this shit, I got to go down to Mexico and make sure this shit really exists. Understand, I had to go down to Mexico and get me a motherfucking sample to know the nigga wasn't faking, selling me fake gold, that the nigga was really selling me gold. And God damn it, when I went down there to Mexico and got that sample, that motherfucker was selling gold. Matter of fact, he was selling platinum, baby. For $5,000 a key, nigga, 200 keys at a million dollars. Forget about it. Forget about it. If that happens, forget about it. It's over, baby. You can write it off, baby. Case closed. I retired. That was my retirement right there, baby. Coming down to Florida, the hot Fort Lottie Dottie after running. Over 200 keys at $5,000 a key, baby. Understand that. I didn't want to be king. I wanted to be the prince. I was happy with being prince, baby. Pops already told me, you shall never be king. But God damn it, the prince can do all everything the king can do and probably more. Because everybody ain't chasing the goddamn prince. But then think about that. Prince Machiavelli said, that ain't true. Everybody hate the goddamn prince more than they hate the king. And I've been riding around here thinking everybody hated the king. But Prince Machiavelli, if you ever want to pick it up and read a book, read Prince Machiavelli. Machiavelli. And he'll tell you all about how motherfuckers hate the prince more than they hate the goddamn king. Wow. So I had to bring you out to the beach this morning and let you catch a little sunrise with me. Because it's hot than a motherfucker down here in the hot Fort Lottie Dottie, baby. So as I tell you, subscribe, share, and like. And I got to say thank you. 
to DeAndre Phillips, my newest subscriber over there on Patreon. I got to give a shout out to DeAndre Phillips, baby, and check out the sights down here at the hot Fort Lottie Dottie on the beach this morning, baby. And I'm shouting out Deontay Phillips, my newest Patreon on Patreon, baby. And if you're looking for me on Patreon, Look at the directory right down below, baby. It only takes $5. And I say thank you. And I got to give you a shout out to DeAndre Phillips. What's happening, my brother? What's happening, my brother? Peace and love, my brother. DeAndre Phillips, hello. My newest Patreon subscriber. Understand that. It's like the church. We got a new member that's to join the church, baby. That's the greatest part of the church service is when they say stand up and join the church. Well, that's the greatest part of my service. At the end of the story, I say you all come on and join Patreon because we finna get it on. These stories are not going to be on YouTube real soon. They're going to be over there on Patreon or YouTube Premium somewhere understand that but also we coming at you from tubi which will be free baby and we always gonna be here on red dots in them red shoes as i tell you subscribe share and like and get this beautiful sunrise with me this morning baby if it's raining or any kind of bad weather where you at go and wake up and get you a piece of this sun but it seems like when i come out to the beach and do a video you motherfuckers, it's player haters. And I ain't doing the shit to be funny. Understand that. I ain't coming to the beach to be funny. You niggas act like I'm coming out of there. I hate to look at the beach. Of the Man, the beach is one of the most beautiful places you can see. Man, these motherfuckers sunrises are breathtaking. If you ain't never caught a sunrise, and I'm going to catch one from y'all where that motherfucker come from the bottom to the top. I'm talking about look like it come from under the water. One of the most beautiful things you see. And I never seen such a sunrise until I got to Florida. I never seen such a sunrise in Detroit because we in the bottom. Understand that. We down here in the hot Fort Lottie Dottie, baby. We closest in America as you can get to the equator, baby. So we see the sun coming and look like it come from up under the water. And I'm going to catch that for you all one day. But I got to tell y'all, the beach is a beautiful place. And if you don't like it, you missing out on something that you ought not. So subscribe, share, and like, and thank you, my brother DeAndre Phillips. And I hope you like sunrises in the sun. Who can make the sun shine? The candy man can. The candy man can. Who can make the sun rise? They say the candy man can. So subscribe, share, and like, and thank you, my brother DeAndre Phillips. And have a good morning, all of you out there. Whether you like the beach or not, whether you like the beach or not, have a good day. Peace and love. Simmons Law, check out, and she'll help you out. Jelani's Tasting Table, world-class chef, straight out of Baker's College. Understand that, world-class chef, straight out of Baker's College. Go over there and check Coney Island Chronicle out today. Coney Island Tony, check him out today. Subscribe, share, and like Coney Island Chronicles and Super Ken for the weekend, baby. It's Friday. Super Ken, top tier cuts 313. Super Ken for the weekend, baby. Top tier cuts 313. Super Ken for the weekend. And don't forget about the Loud Brothers. Class and Matt is the Loud Brothers. I smell them all the way out here on the goddamn beach. They so loud. Them motherfuckers is loud. The Loud Brothers, straight out of Highland Park, Michigan. Call them Clarence and Matt Cav, the Loud Brothers. Subscribe, share, and like. And while you doing that, drop a dime, and I'll blow your mind. Drop a dime, and I'll blow your mind up there in Bay City at the dime shop. Exit 153, 21 years and older required. ID required, 21 years and older. 
ID required. Drop a dime and I'll blow your mind. And go over there and check them out on Big Boss Film. That's Courtney Brown Jr. too. Check out what they doing today, baby. Big Boss Film and Motown Mafia Podcast on Spotify. That's Courtney Brown Jr. too. And while you're over there on Spotify, please stop by Crime Town Kingpin's Kids and check out Ryan Gear Valley, the actual FBI officer who brought the fat man down. Check out his story. And what he say about the fat man over there on Crime Town, Kingpin's Kids on Spotify. It's a podcast. So subscribe, share, and like. I am Eddie Baby over there on Instagram. And one more time, thank you, thank you, thank you to my latest subscriber. Peace, love, and I'm out.